maybe I'll just sort of open it up to you mm-hmm. for an opportunity to talk about you, Les, to talk about what that's done to London and whether or not there is really a um, anti-car, was, is that how he described it? Anti-motorist? Anti-motorist, mm-hmm. anti-motorist policies, yeah, um, in, in Britain. Yeah, sure. So I think, um, you know, air pollution is one of those things, right, where, you know, there are some topics which, you know, you look at and there's a bit of a mixed kind of evidence about, you know, maybe some things are good, maybe not, it's not quite as bad as you think. Air pollution is not one of those things, right? <laughs> like, everything that comes out is like, oh my God, like, air pollution is, like, is bad, right? Yeah. You know, regardless of kind of, you know, whether, you know, you are kind of, you know, salad munching hippie or like kind of proper, like, you know, petrol head, you should care about air pollution and want air pollution to be lower. Um, and air pollution is particularly a problem in cities, right? Because you've got all these different sources of emissions, you know, not just cars, but also things like wood burners as well, that, you know, they get in the sky, they fly around, people breathe them in, people get sick. Um, so thinking about like how we reduce air pollution is, is an important kind of urban policy problem. I think in terms of, you know, sort of this kind of claim of the war on the motorist, um, I think, again, if we take a step back and we think about, you know, over the past, you know, decade and a bit, um, you know, train fares have gone up, um, you know, bus tickets have gone up, um, you know, all, all kinds of public transports become less accessible and more, inexpen- more expensive. Fuel duty has not increased in price at all, like o- o- over that period. And so relatively driving, motoring has just factually become cheaper relative to other forms of transport. Now, maybe it should, maybe it shouldn't, but still that fact of air pollution being bad, um, driving has got much cheaper, means you've created these congestion problems within London, which are now much worse than they were 10 years ago. So I think there's always going to have to be this response from government in terms of how do we mitigate the impact of too much driving or too much pollution within London. Again, maybe Ulysse isn't quite the right way to do it. Maybe maybe it's, uh, you know, we're supportive of it, but, um, you know, we think it's a good policy and a good idea. But some some of the responses come out in kind of recent weeks about how it's like not a problem at all, how there's no, you know, actually breathing in fumes and smog is fine. I actually know. love nitrogen yeah. dioxide. Yeah. It tastes delicious. Just huffing it. Right? Yeah, 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 I am, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in between takes of this, I've got a bag down here. Uh, um, you know, t- tackling that, that is important and we should all be thinking about how we try and do it. Mm. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's almost, it's difficult because you feel like, I think it is the case, particularly what we were just talk, talking about earlier with urban planning, that it's designed for, for car journeys, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's the supermarket in the suburbs, whether it's the out of, out of town um, shopping center, and that also raises access, accessibility questions for people yeah. who can't drive, mm-hmm. um, for people who are too old to drive, et cetera. I, I really struggle with the idea that, you know, um, British, the British state or British society is oriented yeah. like it's a war on the motorist. Yeah. I, I don't think that's yeah. the case at all. I mean, I mean, you kind of have this paradoxical position where people are sort of claiming that, oh, there's a war on the motorist and like they're winning, right? Somehow. <laughs> but also that like, so also like, you know, the, everyone in Britain drives, right? Yeah. It's like one of those two things can be true, right? You know, either sort of, you know, the, the motorists are being, mm-hmm. you know, crushed underfoot. Uh, or there are, like the you know, or, like, <laughs> or, or, yeah, or everyone drives, right? You know, and I think particularly within, you know, the suburbs of big cities, right? Driving is always going to be an important, if not the most important form of transport within urban areas. But thinking again, sort of how can you shift, you know, the five, 10% people who are kind of wavering between driving and cycling or, or driving and getting, getting a bus or uh, a train, if it's convenient for them, that's an important urban policy question, you know, not mm. just from the air pollution side, but also in terms of climate or from, almost in terms of, you know, getting quickly and cheaply to, you know, city center jobs or, you know, wages are higher. There's a whole bunch of benefits that come with that. Yeah, I think there's there's definitely benefits to, you know, some things are always going to be easier drive, driving mm-hmm. wise. I don't know. You're going to go and do the big, big bi-weekly food shop, yeah, right? Totally. You'd much rather put that in the back of a car than sure. carry it in a backpack mm-hmm. um, as someone who's done that. <laughs> 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 it sucks. Yeah. Um, yeah. But equally, as there are things that are better for driving, there are things that aren't. And I, I think about, you know, um, Europe's busiest shopping street, Oxford Street. Why is that not yeah. pedestrianized? Yeah. Um, I think about low traffic neighborhoods and a lot of the research that shows that actually the, ta- the traffic doesn't get displaced to either side of it. The traffic actually kind of evaporates. Mm-hmm. And if that works in tandem with good public transport, segregated cycle lanes, yeah. all of these things, it's not about stopping people from driving. It's about making the easiest and best way to make the journey being on a bike, walking, yeah. public transport. Yeah. And, and the spatial element really matters as well, right? So it should be local government deciding these things case by case for 
different places and working out what's right for them, right? So mm. Rishi Sunak's seat in rural affluent North Yorkshire, cars are always going to be the dominant mode there. And that's totally fine, right? But within central London, right, within kind of zone two, you know, London, bits of kind of inner Manchester or Birmingham, that's quite different, right? And actually shifting towards, you know, away from cars and towards its other uses, totally possible and has, has all of these benefits as well. So, you know, again, this is why kind of thinking about how do we empower local government? How do we have the right responsibility sitting at the right level? Really important for, um, you know, not just improving state capacity and improving the initiative of government, but also, you know, just getting better local outcomes as well, which we all want. One of my favourite um, sort of bits of public policy making is in Lablana, they, the mayor basically announced that he wanted to start, he wanted to pedestrianise basically the entire city centre. And when he announced that he wanted to do this, it was enormously unpopular. He mm. was like, he would get assaulted in the street. It was that unpopular. Um, continued with it anyway, followed it through, and now, nearly 20 years later, it has something like 90% public approval because it's actually quite nice. Quite yeah. To walk it. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a cliche, but you know, most of the things people hate about cities are things they hate about cars, right? Mm. Um, you know, loads of cars jammed into kind of a grey kind of concrete environment. It's really noisy, it's really smelly, it's really dangerous, you can't get anywhere. It sucks, right? Mm. Um, but that, exactly that same environment, you know, with like a paint and pedestrianized and made kind of more of a human space, you know, maybe it doesn't necessarily have kind of the economic benefits, you know, that, that we really care about center for cities, but certainly in terms of kind of all those health benefits and lifestyle benefits, Life you know, those are, you know, all really evident. We also kind of had it right in COVID. Do you remember? Yeah. It, in, in, you walked through central London. Soho was, was like pedestrianized yeah. and yeah. they had alfresco dining. Yes. It was, it was buzzing. It, yeah, it was. Yeah, it, it looked really, pretty nice. Yeah, and really then... Nice. I'm just going to assume it was probably Westminster yeah. City Council took, took, that, right. took that away from us. Took yeah. Away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the government took it away. Nice, love yeah. that. Um, <laughs> okay. Great work. Got to read everyone back in. Yeah, yeah. Get get over. yeah. Like, enjoy, get back indoors. Enjoying yourself. Of the yeah. COVID get, get, come on, SUVs. Come on. <laughs> yeah, get back to your fucking desk. Um, yeah. Just thinking about you, Les. Finally, Ant. Mm-hmm. Um, this is probably the last question from me. Is is this is what Sadiq Khan's trying to do? Quite radical. Is it out there? Is by pushing ULES to the outer boroughs of London by sort of waging this war on air pollution, where does he sit within sort of the field of people who are trying to yeah. do something about air pollution globally? So internationally, it's quite bold. Um, yeah. You know, there's, there's not many places that are, you know, congestion charging in general, um, where, you know, where you're, you're putting prices on, um, you know, people as, as you try and make journeys is quite uncommon generally. Doing it particularly on polluting vehicles is especially kind of uncommon. Uh, and when it has been done, it's often been to quite small areas, such as the current ULES boundary. Having it cover, cover an entire jurisdiction, I don't think as many, if any, places which which are kind of at that level. So, you know, uh, I think, um, you know, Sadiq has kind of often kind of, um, you know, uh, criticised many things. But I think on this particular kind of issue, um, you know, it has been quite quite a bold step that the um, that the mayor is taking. Mm. 